Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Made Simple. In this tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you two techniques on how to mix fluids and colors in a flip simulation inside Houdini. So a quick overview of the setup, pretty simple. I have a sphere and a flip source to create the emitter and then I transform this four times. So uh, just to offset the position and then I'll assign a different color to all of them. And then I create some point velocity just to have some initial velocity on each emitter. So if we go into the DOM net, uh, we have a four volume source. Uh, they are bringing each emitter uh, and they are all emitting by uh, doing 60 frame. So if we go and hit play, you can see that uh, everything is falling into the container but the color is not mixing so it doesn't give the impression that the fluid is mixing uh, so in order to mix the color we want to go and create a soap solver and we need to connect the soap solver into the fourth uh, entry so we're just going to add into the merge and inside the soap solver we are going to create an attribute transfer just to transfer uh, the color attribute from its own particle. So we're just gonna uh, connect there. Then on the points, let's type CD to transfer the color. And under the conditions tab, uh, we can decrease the distance threshold to maybe 0.2 and the blend uh, to 0.1. And a key setting in this case is gonna be the max sample count. This is basically saying how many neighbors is gonna be using to, to create this uh, transfer. So we want this uh, to create a nice blend. So we're gonna go and type maybe 30. And as you can see now, uh, if we go back and we hit play, we can see right away some uh, color mixing happening. We can see some purple. Let's uh, make the points bigger so we can see this a bit better. Uh, this is a low res scene, but we can see already some blending happening, some mixing. Uh, when the fluids are collapsing, even in the, in the center, we can see uh, the blue and the and the green mixing. Same with the green and the and the yellow. And another thing we can do if we want to uh, mix everything faster and maybe smoother, we can go into a soap solver and right after the attribute transfer, we can create an attribute blur. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the attribute blur, and we can connect here. In the middle, in the attribute, we can type CD. And uh, on the influence type, we have to switch from connectivity to proximity. And we can play with max neighbors. This is gonna help us to take in account more points. And another key setting is gonna be the blurring iterations. I'm gonna try a value of eight. Uh, but if you go too high, this is gonna blend way too much. So you have to be careful on how, how you go in the, with this value inside the, the soap solver so as you can see now uh, it's blending way faster than, than before so feel free to play with this value I, I feel that for this project maybe eight is a bit too much uh, so i'm gonna go lower in this case let's try something like four and hit play and now i feel it's blending nicely so i'm gonna keep this value at four and go ahead and cache the scene an important note in this case is if you're going to be using a fluid compress, you need to, on the keep attribute tab, uh, make sure that you are including the CD. So you are saving the color attribute for, from the sim. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to have that uh, attribute. So just make sure that you add that and then you can uh, cache the sim as usual. So this is the end result. As you can see, we have all the four emitters. Uh, mixing once they uh, pour into the container and by the end of the, the time frame we have something pretty uh, uniform we have more uh, yellowish and greenish on the right and more reddish on the on the left and when we create the mesh we just need to make sure that we're transferring the color attribute and that's it pretty straightforward as you can see so let's go ahead and sh uh, i'm going to show you and share with you the second option so for the second option, it's pretty much the same, but instead of doing inside the DOM net with the soap solver, we're gonna do it after. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and cache the, the scene without doing too much. Just make sure that the fluid compressed, you are keeping the color attribute, uh, hit cache, and 
uh, then we can move on. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an unpack node in order to uh, get access to the particles. I'm going to move this just a little. And if we go to a particle face surface, we don't need the color in this case for the surface. We're going to transfer that after we, we mix the color. So we're going to create an attribute transfer, same we did in the sub solver. We're going to type CD to get the color and same stuff. We're going to uh, transfer the color from itself and under the conditions tab, we're going to lower the threshold to maybe 0.1 and 0.2 and same, we're going to go up with a max sample count. As you can see now, we already have some mixing happening and usually we're going to be using higher values compared to the ones in SubSolver when we do it uh, after the cache. In this case, 50 is going to be okay. And then I'm going to create an attribute blur, connect this to the transfer and and make sure that we're blurring the color attribute and the type is going to be proximity uh, and we can play uh, with the proximity radius to maybe reach for neighbors that are closer and maybe go higher in the point counts let's try 100 and as you can see it's already affecting and blurring iteration is going to be key to really smooth this result so i'm going to go again with higher numbers in this case when we do it outside and if we try 40 you can see that now it's already looking pretty pretty good so let's transfer this to the mesh so let's create an attribute transfer and transfer the colors from the point to the mesh and if we compare uh, the first technique to the second they look pretty similar uh, there is some difference i feel the first one is mixing a bit more uh, we can always go and maybe play with some values post cache, maybe with the attribute blur uh, to make everything smoother. Uh, so that's one of the advantages of doing after that. You can also, uh, you can always go and play after the cache and you don't have to resume. But there are some drawbacks compared to the first technique. And we want to talk about them in a second. So the main drawback of the second technique, although you do have more flexibility and the sim is faster, uh, is that if you go too high with the blurring iterations, you can have some uh, early mixing happening. You can see now these emitters, they are too close and they are mixing even before they, they, they touch compared to the first technique when they keep the color pretty, pretty well until they touch together. But again, you can fix this and, and kind of find the balance with this value. In this case, we still have some early mixing happening compared to the first one. So in natural blur, I wouldn't go so high, probably 100 or something like that. And now you can see that we're keeping a, a nice a color on the red and the blue. You can try a, maybe a bit more. Again, feel free to play with the values. Just be aware that if you go too high, you might run into these kind of problems. Also, proximity radius, you can play with this to keep things tighter. So you don't look for neighbors too far from the, from the point. So here is the final render side to side. On the left, we have the first technique. On the right, we have the second technique. In my opinion, they both look pretty good when you look them in real time. Uh, again, you might have a preference uh, depending on what you're looking for. Maybe on the right, we could uh, lower the, the blur value so we don't have uh, that much of a mix. Uh, but it's going to be up to you depending on your shot, what is your emitter. I, I do feel that both techniques are, are really good. And especially the second one, you do have the, the upside that uh, you can play after the cache so you don't have to, to go blind, right? On the, on the first technique, Sometimes you are trying to, to, to guess the right value and you have to wait for the sim to happen. In the second one, uh, you have real-time uh, fit so you can make the adjustments uh, a bit faster. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe. It really help to support the channel and keep creating content. And I will see you on the next one.